Hello there. In this video, we're going to discuss the Dirichlet eta function. So the Dirichlet eta function, which is typically abbreviated by the Greek letter eta of x, is equal to the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times 1 divided by k to the power of x. So this series defined function should look vaguely familiar to the zeta function or the Riemann zeta function, which is defined to be equal to the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by k to the x. So in a sense, the Dirichlet eta is an alternating form of the Riemann zeta function. So in this video, we're going to establish the direct connections between these two functions, describe some of the properties of the Dirichlet eta function, and also develop its integral representation. We're going to begin by evaluating the Dirichlet eta function at a value for which you actually already know the value of. So for example, let us consider the value of eta at the value 1. So this is equivalent to writing the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by 1 to the k, i.e. the alternating harmonic series. As we know, this is going to be 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth minus plus 1 fifth minus plus and so on, and as we know, this is equal to the natural log of 2. So clearly, the eta function is defined for values at 1. So let's consider the alternating series test to determine the values of x for which this function actually is convergent. So the alternating series test says the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1, 1 divided by k to the x, is going to be convergent if this term here is positive and always decreasing. So this is always decreasing if the value of x is greater than 0. And since k is a positive number, that should be very easy to prove using your basic rules of real numbers. So if that is the case, then we can conclude. So therefore, the domain of the Dirichlet eta function is the interval 0 to infinity. Again, you can talk about the values like at 0 in particular, or negative 1 or negative 2, and talk about other summational methods, but we're not going to talk about those special uh, considerations here. So for notation purposes, we're going to write, uh, for example, sums of this form. The sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 uh, times 1 divided by the square root of k. So we know 1 half is greater than 0, uh, so this definitely converges, and we're going to denote this by the eta evaluated at 1 half. So let's see if we can tie this to the Riemann zeta function, for which we already know a couple values at, uh, using some special methods. So let's begin by writing the zeta function. So zeta of x, as we know, is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 to the x plus 1 divided by 2 to the x plus 1 divided by 3 to the x plus 1 divided by 4 to the x plus 1 divided by 5 to the x plus and so on. And we're going to assume that this is, you know, convergent. Uh, so we're going to be assuming that x is greater than 1 here. Uh, we're also going to consider the Dirichlet eta function, so eta of x, which as we know is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 to the x, minus 1 divided by 2 to the x, plus 1 divided by 3 to the x, minus 1 divided by 4 to the x, plus 1 divided by 5 to the x, minus plus, and so on. Since we're going to be manipulating these series, we need to guarantee that both of these series converges. Uh, so since x is greater than 0 for convergence here, we're going to choose the more uh, restricted case, namely x is greater than 1, which is going to guarantee that any manipulations to these infinite series is also going to converge as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up these, add up these series, uh, or rather subtract them, uh, to sort of get a nice result. So if we do zeta of x minus eta of x, what are we going to have? So 1 over 1 to the x minus 1 over 1 to the x are going to cancel. 
1 over 3 to the x's are going to cancel, 1 over 5 to the x's are going to cancel, and all the odd terms in general are going to cancel. And then we're left with these even terms, so 1 minus negative uh, 1 is going to be two uh, values of whatever that quantity is. So this is going to give us 2 times 1 over 2 to the x. Same thing is going to go to 1 over 4 to the x, so we're going to get 2 times 1 over 4 to the x. Then 2 times 1 over 6 to the x, plus, and so on. And again, this is going to be true if x is bigger than 1. So we're going to factor out a 2 out of this expression, so we're going to get zeta of x minus eta of x is going to be equal to 2 times the expression 1 over 2 to the x plus 1 over 4 to the x plus 1 over 6 to the x and so on. Uh, just a quick observation here that every one of these numbers inside of this bracket on the bottom underneath x are divisible by 2 so we're going to pretty much factor uh, these numbers as 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4 and so on to try and get another nicer representation. So we're going to have zeta of x minus eta of x is going to be equal to 2 times 1 divided by 2 to the x times 1 to the x plus 1 over 2 to the x times 2 to the x plus 1 over 2 to the x times 3 to the x plus 1 over 2 to the x times 4 to the x plus and so on. So now I have a common factor of 1 over 2 to the x out of this entire bracket so I'm going to factor that out. So I have zeta of x minus eta of x is going to be equal to 2 divided by 2 to the power of x times the infinite series 1 over 1 to the x plus 1 over 2 to the x plus 1 over 3 to the x plus 1 over 4 to the x uh, to infinity. Uh, so as we already know this is precisely the definition of zeta of x and we're assuming that this converges. Uh, that means x must be greater than 1 which is in this assumption of this definition. So, and we can rewrite this, uh, since that's a power of 1 divided by a power of x, then that's 2 to the 1 minus x. So we can rewrite this expression as zeta of x minus eta of x is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 1 minus x times zeta of x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much uh, factor this by grouping our like terms of zeta. Uh, so I'm going to bring my eta of x to the right hand side and bring my uh, exponential zeta to the left hand side. And this is going to give me uh, zeta of x times the quantity 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus x is going to be equal to zeta of x. Or in uh, the traditional format, since we're talking about zeta, I'll write that on the left. So zeta of x is going to be equal to uh, zeta of x times 1 minus 2 to the power 1 over x. And this is the direct connection between the zeta and eta functions. Okay, cool. Um, so with this property, uh, let's work out a uh, basic application problem. Uh, so for example, suppose I want to know what is the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 times zeta of x. So as we know, uh, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Zeta 1 pretty much goes to infinity since that's the harmonic series. So we have an infinity times 0 issue going on here. And as we know from differential calculus, this is a what we call an indeterminate form. Um, so one thing we can do is we can pretty much take this identity we have here and, re and replace zeta of x with eta of x divided by 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus x. So let's do that. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 times eta of x divided by 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus x. So as we know, uh, eta of x does not have any issues at x, as x goes to 1. So we can pretty much uh, take the limit as x goes to 1 of eta x uh, and pretty much factor that out. So we're going to pull this out. So we're going to have, this is going to be eta of 1 times the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 divided by 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus x. So as we already know, eta of 1 is the alternating harmonic series which converges to the natural log of 2. So this is going to be equal to the natural log of 2 multiplied by this limit. As so x approaches 1 of x minus 1 divided by 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus x. 
So as x goes to 1, uh, the top goes to 0, the bottom, so 1 minus 1 is 0, to the 0 is 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so the bottom goes to 0 as well. So this is a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, so we can use the hopa tiles rule. So taking the derivative of the top and bottom with respect to x, this is going to give us the natural log of 2 times the limit as x approaches 1. So the derivative of the top is just 1. The derivative of the bottom is going to be equal to, so we have a negative sign, we have an exponential with a base of 2 times the derivative of the top, which in this case is negative 1. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So this is just precisely equal to the natural of 2 times the limits as x approaches 1 of 1 divided by 2 to the 1 minus x times the natural log of 2. So 2 to the 1 minus 1 is going to be equal to 1, and so this is just equal to the natural log of 2. So this just gives us the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 2, which is just equal to 1. Therefore, in conclusion, we can say that the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 times zeta of x is equal to 1. So now let's work on getting the integral representation for the Dirichlet eta function. So recall one of the properties that we used to derive the integral representation for the Riemann zeta function was the following. So the integral from zero to infinity of t to the x minus one times e to the minus nt dt, where n is a positive number, is equal to the gamma function divided by n to the power of x. So it's like a manipulated uh, gamma function representation. So rearranging this expression and calling n k, we can get the expression 1 divided by k to the x is equal to 1 divided by gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the minus kt dt. So how we got the integral representation for zeta was taking the sum of both sides of this expression. Um, since we want an alternating series, we're going to multiply both sides of this by negative 1 to the k plus 1. So we're going to have negative 1 to the k plus 1 times 1 over k to the x is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times negative 1 to the k plus 1 times e to the minus kt dt. And keep in mind, I'm multiplying both sides by a function of k, so that's independent of t. And I'm grouping my k terms pretty much next to each other so that on my next step when, my take, when I take my sums, everything is pretty uh, organized. So now I'm going to sum both sides from k is equal to 1 to infinity uh, of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times 1 over k to the x. And this is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 e to the minus kt dt. So as we already know, t ranges from 0 to infinity, and if k is a positive number, then this is always less than 1, and this is a negative number that's going to sort of oscillate uh, based on the values of k. So we can pretty much withdraw this negative 1 in terms of this exponential, and we can treat this term as a geometric series. And as we already know, this is precisely the definition of the eta function, uh, which is what we want. Uh, so we get that eta of x is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times, and since this is a geometric series, uh, this is going to converge uh, to 1 over 1 minus the term or the common ratio, which in this case is going to be negative e to the minus uh, x. hesitated for a moment there because this is going from k is equal to infinity, so t is the constant in terms of uh, the summation. Uh, so what do we have here? So we have a negative times a negative, which is going to be a positive. Uh, so then we have that the eta function of x is going to be equal to 1 divided by gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the x. Oh, and I forgot my common ratio term at the top, shame on me. There we go. Okay. 
I was like, wait a minute, something's not right. All right, so now we're on the same page. So we can multiply top and bottom uh, by e to the x. Uh, that's going to turn my e to the minus x is to 1. Uh, so we get 1 over e to the x plus 1 on the bottom. So it's going to give us e to the x plus 1 uh, dx. And this gives us the power series uh, for the eta function. And of course, compare this to the Riemann zeta function integral representation which is just 1 over gamma of x times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 divided by e to the x minus 1 dx. So there's only one slight little difference uh, between the Riemann zeta and the Dirichlet eta function in terms of its integral representations and also their infinite series definitions. So in the next video, we'll work out through some examples on how to evaluate particular integrals via the Riemann zeta function and the Dirichlet eta function.